والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب الله العالمين أبو القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المقصومين المنتجبين اللهم كن لوليك الحجة بن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه ارضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا. اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله اصطفى ادم ونوحا وال ابراهيم وال عمران على العالمين ذرية بعضها من بعض والله سميع عليم صدق الله العلي العظيم. Congratulations to all of you, my sisters, my brothers, on the 11th of the Qada, the anniversary of the birth of our eighth Imam, eighth successor. to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Al-Imam Abu al-Hasan Ali ibn Musa al-Rida alayhi salatu wa salam. An Imam who lived 52 years of his life in the city of his grandfather al-Madina al-Munawwala and the last three years of his life he spent in Khorasan, in exactly the province of Tuz. Uh, and these three years, the three last years of his life were very dramatic and had a huge impact on the history of Islam, in particular the history of Ahlul Bayt and Shia Islam. Sometimes the enemies, they are fools. The enemies sometimes they try to hurt, but they do a great benefit. Mahmoud al-Abbasi, who was very cunning, very shrewd man, he was the most intelligent among Bani Abbas, this dynasty who succeeded Bani Umayyah. Mahmoud was the most intelligent. The reason for him to summon the Imam and take him from his house in Medina all the way across the plains and rivers and deserts and mountains and take him to Khurasan is to put him under house arrest, under his strict surveillance. Because he saw in this Imam, our Imams, they did not have armies, they did not have weapons, but they have the weapon of truth and justice, Al-Haq. And nothing is above Haq. In this universe, nothing can be superior or more powerful than Haq. Imagine God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He calls Himself Al-Haq. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِهِ الْبَارِ Our Imams, including Imam al-Ridha, they did not store weapons at home against the government. Neither they had fought fighters or soldiers, but they embraced the truth and haq. And this is why tyrants, dictators, they fear the truth. They fear haq and justice. He could not stand seeing the Imam being the magnet and polarizing the people towards the school of Ahlul Bayt when he was in Medina, so he decided to take him to Khurasan under the pretext that I want to make him the heir to the throne, Waliul Ahd. But this was not his intention. Al Mamun, he wanted to control the Imam, put him under control, under house arrest. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the verses that Brother Amiri recited in the beginning, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ They plan the deceivers. They plan to destroy you. But God has a better plan. Allah is also is planning. And ultimately the plan of Allah is going to win. And this is what happened to Al-Imam 
Abu al-Hasan Ali ibn Musa Bila alayhi salatu wassalam. In three years of his time, of his residence in Khorasan, he was able to attract the Jews, the Christians, the Sabians. At that time, Khorasan was a center of knowledge and it was the capital. Ma'moon, he made Khorasan and Tuz the capital of Islam for some period of time. And then he moved it from Khorasan to Baghdad. So Khorasan was the capital of Islam at that time. And he wanted to embarrass the Imam and defeat him. So he will call the leaders of the Adyan, Adyan and Madahib, the Jews, the Christians, the Sabians, the Buddhists, the atheists, to confront the Imam and dialogue with him. But then at the end, the Imam will give them the answers, the mind-boggling answers. They knew that this is this man is not an ordinary man. He's not just a scholar. He's not just a alim. He has the support, the ta'eed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So rather than the Imam being embarrassed in the front of Ma'moon and his courtyard and the interfaith leaders, the Ma'moon himself in every session, he was the one who was embarrassed. Because the Imam through his knowledge divinely inspired knowledge and logic and hikmah and wisdom he was able to defeat the opponents and give them the due answers and then at that time islam was spreading imam al-imam rida through his knowledge his tolerance was able to spread the message of ahlul bayt and to the extent that Al-Ma'mun himself, when he could not defeat the Imam, he could not character assassinate the Imam, he declared, I am Shia. Al-Ma'mun himself, Ma'mun al-Abbas, said, I am one of the followers of Ahlul Bayt. He pretended to be Shia, but he was not Shia. He pretended because he wanted also to attract the the support of the masses in Khorasan, also in other parts, in Basra, in Madain, in Kufa, in other parts of the Muslim world. So he pretended to be one of the followers of Ahlul Bayt, but he was not. He was the enemy of Ahlul Bayt. And the message of Imam السلام, was able to reach east and west. East and west. People came from many long distances to come and listen to the Imam, Imam al-Ridha when he was in Khorasan. And when this plot was foiled and Ma'moon could not destroy the reputation of the Imam, he tried very hard to prove that Imam is not the best one. Imam al is just one of the scholars. There are others who are better than him, but he could not. Before him, before Imam al-Ridha was his father, Imam Musa alayhi salam. Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kawi. Musa ibn Ja'far was imprisoned for 11 years in Basra and Baghdad and was killed by Harun, the father of al-Ma'mun. Before that, Imam al-Sadiq, the sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam, who was murdered by Abu Ja'far al-Mansur, the second Abbasite caliph, the one who built the city of Baghdad. He built a city, physical city, but he killed the scholars or the Imams. Abu Ja'far al-Mansur was so hateful to Ahlul Bayt that he made it mandatory that people should, should follow only the Khalifatayn and he would sanctify them, the two caliphs, and that every speaker at the Friday sermon should not leave the podium before praising and complimenting the two kings. Allahumma ba'an fulam, 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 that the cliche that you hear today, it goes back to the time of Abu Ja'far al Mansur. Before him, nobody would mention the caliphs, but because he was so hateful to Ahlul Bayt, so he decided that. The name of the caliphs has to be mentioned in the Friday sermons. This is 
the challenge that our Imams they faced by the tyrants of that time. But still, still the truth cannot be concealed. Truth cannot be defeated. Cannot be defeated. Truth would move forward. وَيَمْ كُرُونَ وَيَمْ كُرُوا اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَيَعْبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا أَنْ يُتِمَّ نُورَهِ And part of our mission today, we the followers of Al-Imam Al-Ridha and Al-Imam Al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam and the followers of Imam Hussain and ultimately we are the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We need to follow their example. We need to take this message of Islam, this pure message of Islam, to the masses through not necessarily speeches or books. Sometimes they are good to write books and give speeches and researches, but also the movies that you saw, the trailer of this movie, where our dear brother Abu Muhammad Jassim Qabazard, I know his father, Hajj Muhammad Qabazard, when I was a little kid, I grew up in Kuwait. And his father was really a magnet for the highly educated people, the scholars, Christians, Sunnis, Shias. His house was the hub. I remember at the age of 10, sometimes my father would smuggle us to your father's house, you know, takes us because we would you know, harassed my mother at home, so he would take some of us, two or three of us with him. So we would see your father, and he was surrounded by scholars, authors, ulama, theologians, jurists. His father was keen on spreading the school of Ahlul Bayt through aim, through knowledge. So Jason took this trait and this quality from his late father, Haj Muhammad Qabazad, and he worked on this movie, which inshallah is going to be a beginning. I saw the movie last night at home. He graciously came to my house last night and we spent good time with him and I saw the full movie. It's about two hours and uh, 10 minutes, two hours and 10 minutes movie. It's a good movie. This is how we should introduce the message of Imam Hussein to the masses, to the Muslims first before the non-Muslims. Many Muslims, they know nothing about Imam Hussein. They know nothing. They hear the name Hussein, but what does Hussein mean? What does he stand for? What does he stand for? They know nothing about that. It is our job, my sisters, my brothers, the young generation, the old generation, to take this message of peace and love and togetherness and harmony to mankind we have to carry this message, the message of Ahlul Bayt, to the masses. Imam al rida as Brother Nuri mentioned, Nuri Sardar, who recited the poetry here, he has been here, this is his second time here, and I mentioned, if you remember, some of you, Nuri, he crossed the eye. Nuri Sardar, he crossed the eye. You know what I mean by crossing the eye? He crossed the eye to embrace the school of Ahlul Bayt. He was not born the follower of Ahlul Bayt, but through research, through reading, through comparison, he found that the school of Ahlul Bayt is the school that leads to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He embraced this school wholeheartedly, which is reflected in his beautiful and powerful poetry that you see. This is our job. We have to research. It is a through ilm, through research, through reading, through comparison, my friends. Don't take Shia Islam for granted. It is an ongoing, ongoing task that we do the research every single day to try to reach the truth and find the truth. مهمتنا أيها الأحبة أن نبحث عن الحق دائما دائما هذه مهمة الإنسان في الأرض أن لا يستريح حتى يصل إلى الحق No break We cannot take a break until we really reach the truth 
Some of you are born, some of us, we are born into this family and that family. But this is not enough. This is not enough. When God is going to question us tomorrow on the Day of Judgment, to tell him that I was born in this family, it happened that my family was following this school of thought and this method, and therefore I followed it, this is not enough. It will not bring us salvation or najat. Allah says, I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to ask you to make a comparison. There were thousands of adyan and madahib and traditions and philosophical and theological traditions. Why did you choose this one? We have to provide the answer. So, thank you, Jason. May Allah bless you, Abu Hala, and his honorable wife, who is joining him in his mission, and she's helping him. She's also with us tonight. We welcome you. They flew all the way, and they're going to have a private screening of this movie in New York on Sunday, inshallah. We wish you all the success to get the message of Imam Hussein, especially now where Islam is highly distorted. According to the newspapers, two-thirds of the American people, they, they have suspicious views about Islam. Suspicious views about Islam. Two-thirds of the American people. But we have to work. Some people say, Americans are 300 million, how can we get to them? You begin with first step, you begin with your neighbor, co-worker, friend, Allah will send the message. Imam Hussein in Karbala, you saw, were only 72. But today he has millions of followers. Millions of people who believe in his mission. When they read it, they love it. They fall in love with Hussein, although they don't see him. There are many people who accepted Islam because of the mission of Imam Hussein, because of the sacrifice of Imam Hussein. We have to work. Our job is to work, and we leave the rest with God. But God is going to ask me and you, each and every person, what did you do for your religion? What did you do for your religion, for your faith, for Ahlul Bayt? For Ahlul Bayt, لا تجوز قدما. I conclude with this hadith. I conclude with this hadith. لا تجوز قدما عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربع. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم says, No person can move a step on the day of resurrection. No permission is given to him or her to move a single step unless he provides four answers to four critical questions. حتى يسأل عن أربع. عن عمره فيما أفناه. How did you spend your time, your age, your life? How did you spend it? Where did you spend your time? Where? Tell me. Where did you spend your time? عن عمره فيما أفناه. وعن جسده فيما أبلاه. We have given you this gift of eyes, ears, sam, basar, heart, other limbs. How did you spend them? Where? And then, وَعَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ اكْتَسَبَهُ وَفِيمَا صَرَفَ Your earning, where did you bring this money from? And two hours ago, two hours ago, I was sitting in the office, a lady called, she, had, she said, I have a question. I said, if the question is short, I can answer it now. She said, yes, I make it short. See, look at Islam, look at faith. She said, say it. I used to gamble with my husband. We had the habit of gambling, Qimar. We go to Vegas. But then this Ramadan, I decided I would never do that again. I decided to go back to Allah after knowing that gambling is dangerous, not only a sin, it's a cardinal sin that leads into the destruction of our life. This is what she told me. She said, the last time I gambled, I won $57,000, $57,000. I paid $11,000 as taxes. 
You may know or you may don't know. I didn't know that you have to pay taxes. Now I know something new. You know. So she won $57,000, $11,000 won for taxes. She said, now I don't like this money. Everyone loves money in this life. But when she knows that this is haram and it does not belong to her, now she decides to give this money to the charities and the poor people. This is faith. This is an act of faith. When you need the money, but you know the source of this money is haram source. Haram does not belong to you. You stay away from it. And the amount is a huge amount of money. It's not a couple of hundreds that, that you can forego. It's a huge amount. But this is an act of faith. This is how a person is transformed. When something is haram, I don't touch it. I don't get close to it. Because I'm going to be asked, وَعَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ They're going to ask us about the source of this money. وَفِيمَ صَرَفَ How did you spend this money? And fourth, the fourth question. Fourth question. وَعَنْ حُبِّنَا وَوِلَايَتِنَا أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ عليه رَفُوا الصَّوَاتِ this is very important. Allah has given us. Allah has made a huge favor on mankind by introducing to them Muhammad wa al Muhammad He selected the best, the best in this cosmos system, Muhammad and al Muhammad. He introduced them to the humanity, to mankind, as leaders. Do we follow them? Or we bypass them. We have the option. Those who follow them, not only love them, and hubbina wa wilayatina. Wilaya means, wilaya means you stick to their path and you practice what they practiced. Ali Muhammad were number one in taqwa and piety. Like the lady, the lady who called me. She does not want to touch this money that comes from Qimar. This is piety. This is the fear of God. This is a preparation for the Akhirah. Otherwise, people come and he says, Who cares? After, before, my, before I see Israel, a couple of weeks, I will go to Hajj and I will... No. This is not piety. Piety is when you stop the wrong things you are doing immediately, even if you are healthy, even if you are 20, 30, 40 years old. This is piety. This is taqwallah. To be the follower of Ahlul Bayt, this is important. Imam al-Sadiq says, it's not befitting for someone to call himself Shia to Ahlul Bayt, and he lives in a city and in that city there are thousands وَفِيهِ الْآلَافُ مِنَ النَّاسِ أَنْ يَعِيشَ فِي مِصْرٍ وَفِيهِ الْآلَافُ مِنَ النَّاسِ To live in a neighborhood, Misr means neighborhood, city, town. And there are thousands of inhabitants and he is not number one in piety and taqwa. If he's not number one, he should not call himself Shia. This is Shiaism. This is Shia. Shiaism is not me. Not name we carry, I'm Shia, I'm Shia. I love Imam Rida, I love Imam Rida. Shia is to practice, put it into practice. You have to show piety in a private life and public life. Piety, righteousness, the fear of God. This is Shia. Imam Rida was number one pious during his time. Before him, Imam, Imam Musa al kadhim Before him, Imam al sadiq Imam Muhammad al baqir Imam Zayn al abidin Imam al Hussein, Imam al Hassan, Amir al Mu'minin, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were number one in piety, in righteousness, in discipline, in the sense of responsibility. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to follow, inshallah, the path of our eighth Imam, Al Imam Ali ibn Musa Rida alayhi salatu wa salam. And all other Imams and their great grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, the continuation of this celebration on Saturday because Imam al Rida, he deserves more than one, one night of celebration. He deserves more. More nights that we come here, we gather 
to learn, inshallah, and be inspired by those leaders. Let me, before I recite the final dua, uh, some friends of us are at the hospital, they have surgery. Let's recite tonight is Laylatul Jum'ah. Inshallah, Allah will listen to your du'as, your supplications. Let's recite and then you jeep for them, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amman yujib al-Muftar idha da'ahu wa yakshifu al-Su. Amman yujib al-Muftar idha da'ahu wa yakshifu al-Su. Amman yujib al-Muftar idha da'ahu wa yakshifu al-Su. أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء يا الله من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية المرضى المنظورين اللهم ألبسهم ثوب الصحة والعافية يا أرحم الراحمين اقض حوائجنا للدنيا والآخرة فرج عن المكروبين والمظلومين يا أرحم الراحمين وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد